Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. What is this thing we're doing today? Well, in this tutorial we are making a DIY handbag junk journal. And you know what? They are so pretty and they are so much fun to make, so much fun to own, very unique junk journal I would say. So we will be making one of these from scratch today. We'll do everything together. I've got the notes. So you can take screenshots, you can take the notes and you can follow along. And I'm just going to show you here in the introduction basically what it is. And as you figured out already, it's like a handbag junk journal, right? It has a look of an actual handbag. Mm, fancy. You can go on a stroll, you know, with your little handbag, but it's actually a journal. My initial idea for this video was to turn an old Reader's Digest book into a purse. That was the idea. I wanted to make a purse just like this. And then I was going to make a journal that lives inside the purse. But I changed my mind and what I made here is something that looks like a purse, but it's actually a journal with bound pages or bound signatures. This is the one that we are making in the tutorial. This one here I was testing out for the tutorial. I was just kind of deciding what I wanted to do. And this one here, oh, same thing again. It's got three signatures bound into the book, but this one doesn't have any bits and pieces. It's just, you know, I wanted the lace. Uh, that's what I wanted. I wanted lace. I envisioned in my mind all this lace sticking out. And so that's what I did. So there's all sorts of different things that you can do with this idea and you can customize it and make it 100% unique, 100% you. All right, let's begin. All right. So the very first step is to de-gut an old unwanted book. So I don't advocate for destroying books. Okay. I feel like I have to say that this book is an unwanted book discarded by the library sent to be destroyed so I don't feel bad about giving it new life so basically I just kind of cracked uh, cracked the spine is that the correct term just there to give myself a little bit of space between the book text and the you know this panel over here so that I can go in with my craft knight and cut that right down. Now be careful here. You don't want to cut through the spine because that is something you don't want to do because then you would have to try and fix that spine. All right. Okay, so that's the first side done. And now I need to do the same over here. So I usually kind of find where it's already opening or cracking. And usually these two pages are glued together over here. So I leave them and then I get rid of them later on. So again, just finding that little crack in there. And here we go. So the book text is removed and of course I'm gonna keep this and do all sorts of stuff with this and I love the images here. So pop that to the side, gonna be using that in another project. Next thing I want to do is, you know, I can decide, do I want to keep this page here? Sometimes I do, but this time I don't want to keep it. So I'm just going to rip it and get rid of it. And also this side. Sometimes I do keep this and I fold it this way and then that becomes a pocket, but I'm just gonna get rid of it this time. All right, so we have de the book. We have the base here and this spine is intact. And now I just wanna neaten this up. So see all this stuff sticking up? I'm gonna trim that off a little bit. And of course, I'm going to be careful not to touch the spine there. Just neatening this up because that's going to be adding unnecessary bulk in that crease and I don't want that. So I'll do that same thing on the other side. And here we go. That's nice and neat. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be, but that's ready to go. Our next step is to add the handles. So we do the handles before pretty much anything else. It's totally up to you what kind of handles you want to put on there. I'm using ribbon, as you can see. I'm using the same ribbon I used for this one here. Believe it or not, you can't see the ribbon at all. So the ribbon is completely hidden by the beads. But the reason why I like using ribbon, as opposed to, for example, thick cord like this. I mean, this is an extreme example. It's not that extreme. That would work as a beautiful handle. 
but the reason why I prefer ribbon is because it's nice and flat so when it's glued on the inside of your cover there's no bulge no bulge there okay so I know I'm using ribbon and then I need to prepare some beads I've got all the beads I need ready right here and now I'm just going to approximately cut off however much ribbon I think I will need and of course a tiny little bit more than what I think I will need so let's just do this all right and I might do the same for the other side handle as well while I'm at it done so let's start working on handle number one let's see this is going to be my front cover it doesn't matter where you start I might as well start with the front cover and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where I want the handle to sit so do I want it wide like this or do I want it like maybe really close together like this that's what I'm doing over here so just approximately it really doesn't matter where they sit what matters to me is that they, they are symmetrical so for example I don't want this you know it has to be somewhere in the middle so I like to be precise with the handles because I have to do both sides exactly the same so I'm going to find the middle so that's about the middle there and I want my handles to be maybe let's see yeah that's not bad uh, I'll, I'll stick with that so the next thing I'm going to do is secure one end of the ribbon and I will do that by applying some glue just like that pop it down and then for extra security I'm going to apply masking tape over the top or a few pieces of masking tape just to be double sure and triple sure I just want to be sure, 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 sure. Make sure that's not going to go anywhere. Perfect. And now I add all the beads I'm going to add. So I already know what I want to do because I've already done it here and I just didn't want to spend more time thinking about design and what beads I should use. So I'm just going to replicate this exact thing. But you're probably wondering how did I get my ribbon through this tiny bead look at this this ribbon has to go through this tiny bead opening how is that gonna happen you don't know you're gonna soon find out so here we go I am going to cut this into a really thin little sliver of ribbon just like this and this is why it's important to leave yourself extra ribbon when you're starting off then with my lighter and very carefully i'm going to cinch the edges here just so they're not unraveling you know while i'm beading while i'm adding beads or fraying i should say i don't want things to start fraying okay here we go this is what we have excellent and i'm going to start with my first bead and of course i'm going to speed this process up because this is going to take a while surprisingly even though the ribbon is thick it 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 works i mean clearly it works all right when we get to here that's my first little thing that i'm applying i'm leaving a little bit of space i'm not pushing it all the way to the cover because i want the handles to be able to move around and you can see here if i get a little bit close see that there's movement there so i didn't want everything to be really tight so I just wanted to demonstrate when I get to that really small bead how I kind of beat, beat it onto the ribbon which I don't know why I want to really demonstrate that because I do it the exact same way as I'm what I'm doing here but for some reason I get immense satisfaction threading this wide ribbon into this tiny little bead opening so you see that that's gone through and now look at that perfect all right so I'm going to speed the rest of this beading process up all we're gonna do it's up to you again how large you want the handle to be so it can be a tiny little handle like this that's going to look good you might want it to sit up and not sort of flap down to the side in which case you would make it really tight up here all the way up to that cover and we're going to be doing something else with this as well so anyway you keep adding your beads until you get the right amount of length uh, in the handle is what i'm trying to say 
And here we go. I have threaded all of the beads that I want to go on there. And the good thing is about using the wide ribbon is they are already secure on there. Like I don't need to tighten everything. Everything is, you know, they're not going anywhere. Look, they're staying on there. I have my line over here. So now I'm going to repeat the exact same thing I did on this side. So I'm going to apply some glue over here. The stronger the glue, the better. Maybe I'll get rid of this pointy end. All right, and again, popping that down and leaving space. So I'm just gonna double check. Perfect. That's how long the handle is, nearly all the way to, down to the bottom. So, I mean, anything will look good. That looks really good, anything. You can just pop a few beads on there and it's all good. All right, so there's a little bit of space, maybe. Yeah, that's looking good. And again, going in with masking tape and I'm just gonna make sure it stays in place. So I might add a little bit of glue going all the way up to the edge of the cover. I hope you can see that. See how I've added glue there and there. So pop that down, press it down. I'm really making sure this isn't going to go anywhere. All right, so that's secured down for now. That's not, we're not done with securing that down yet. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the other side and repeat the exact same process. I'm gonna do it off camera, starting off with making the measurements. And I really want to make sure that they are at the same spot. They're completely sitting symmetrical. I suppose once the book is done, it doesn't really matter all, all that much, but you can see what I mean here. Like I want them at exactly the same spots, corresponding. I'm gonna go off camera and do this, mark where I want to put the ribbon and do the beading and everything, and then I'll be right back. So even though I marked the exact same spots, I'm still going to double check by closing the book. So that's pretty good. Leaving some space. All right, and gluing that down. And before it's dry, I'm just going to double check that they are both aligning. Perfect. Okay, this one probably can be moved down a little bit. See how it's tightened up quite a bit up there. So I might need to just maneuver things a little bit. Better to do it now than when everything is glued down and, and done. All right, I'm happy with how that is looking. So now I can secure that down. And again, I'm gonna apply, I'm using a different glue. I think this one's a bit stronger than the one that I'm using currently. Using this one, I took the sticker off. This is the Elmer's bottle, but it's this glue. And this is quite a good glue and it doesn't warp the paper. And of course, I also love this glue, but this one is actually a bit cheaper than this one, quite a bit cheaper. And they pretty much do the exact same thing. So I think for attaching the handles, use the strongest glue you have available. I'm using this, I'm very stingy with my art glitter glue because it's not cheap and it's really, really good. And so I only use it, you know, for like tiny little things like this, which are really important. All right, I'm gonna give that a moment to dry. And now we are up to step number three, which is adding brads. This is optional, you don't have to do this. I am doing it because I like to be on the safe side. And basically what I'm doing now is adding brads. And the reason for these brads are simply as extra reinforcement to keep these in place. Look, I don't want these coming out at any time, these handles. I don't want them kind of sliding out. I know I've added glue and masking tape and I'm going to cover it on the inside as well, but I'm also using brads. So that's why I'm saying it's optional. It's not an absolute must, but I also think that it looks good. Adds a bit more interest, a little bit something extra. Why not? You could have a few brads going down. I don't know if you even have brads. If you don't, just don't even worry about it. So I want the brad feet to not overlap this white edge here because I will be covering the inside and I don't want the brad feet to be visible. So they have, they can't be all the way up here. That is kind of what I'm keeping in mind at this step when I'm deciding where I'm going to pop the brad. So just gonna make a hole there. And there, perfect. And now I know you can't see, but I'm going to choose a brad that I want to use. There's lots of things that would 
look really nice with this kind of look but i am opting for something very little and that's these tiny square brads so the brads go in oh and one more thing you see how i have covered the back cover that handle is sitting sandwiched in between there there's a potential of the handle maybe ripping through this for whatever reason it doesn't matter but this brad is going to keep this ribbon in place and it looks good secure the brad down and here we have it so that brad is going to be hidden with whatever paper i place on top all right i'm going to do the same thing on the other three all right and here is what we have so far it's starting to get that handbag look now because it's got the handles of course you might want to make this into an actual purse rather than a journal this is a tutorial for a journal but i just wanted to show you when i was kind of thinking about this idea and what i wanted to do this is my prototype this actually wouldn't look too bad either you could do a little gussets like this with fabric probably fabric better than paper for sure or maybe even diy fabric paper diy fabric cloth i have a video i'm gonna link it in description and up here on making your own cloth like this so what did i call it oh yes i had to look it up diy fabric paper so it's strong it's durable and you can do all sorts of stuff check out that video you could use perhaps that for the side gussets this is kind of going off on a tangent a little bit but i'm just trying to give you ideas okay this is the right side up but anyway i'm going to make this into a journal but you can absolutely do a little gusset thing here and create an actual handbag or purse of course this needs to be covered as well regardless of what you do journal or a book purse where were we our next step is to reinforce the spine this spine is not very strong this is an old book and you can see it's damaged and it's it's not hard a hard spine like look at these thick boards and then look at this flimsy spine i mean it would work you can sew your signature straight into that spine no problem but if you want something sort of durable and something that's going to keep its shape then i suggest reinforcing the spine and basically all you need is a piece of cardstock or cardboard or cereal boxes or two cereal box layers kind of stuck together because you want it nice and thick like you can see this quite thick as opposed to let's say a cereal box so it's got quite a bit of more thickness than a cereal box i've used cereal boxes before i just use two layers rather than one you pretty much just want your piece to be the exact width or a bit smaller because your book has to close as the spine so if your book has something like this this is perfect actually it's giving me the exact width so i'm gonna mark myself where to cut so perhaps there and then with the height i want it from top to bottom or maybe i will leave a little bit of just a little bit of space both up there and down here so i'm gonna trim that down i'll be right back all right here we go the piece is cut and now i'm just going to double check so the main thing is the book has to close it has to be able to close and that's perfect you see that per absolutely perfect and now i'm going to have structure in that spine i'm going to glue this piece down but first i'm just going to use my brown sharpie just to hide this top edge so when you're looking down into the book you can't see cardstock and I'm going to cover the whole thing with glue, the whole thing, as much glue on there as possible. I don't have to be pedantic about anything and don't have to worry about glue seeping to the sides because everything is going to be covered. Add a little bit of glue in here for good measure. Why not? Might even go in there and in there and pop this down in place. That's perfect. And then of course press down all right so we have reinforced the spine and now we're gonna make it look good and we're gonna hide all the ugliness here so we're going to cover with washi you don't have to use washi tape I'm using washi tape because I have this beautiful washi tape from the washi tape shop I'm going to leave a link down below and the code a discount code if you are interested but you don't have to use washi I have this on my desk what is this that would work what else do we have we have some lace that would also work something like this some fabric perhaps you know anything you have anything at all a paper you can use paper i prefer not to use paper because paper can crack in those creases 
washi tape has a little bit more give and fabric especially i've been using fabric mostly for these types of projects all right here is an example in this one here i've just used fabric you can see i've done the exact same thing you can see that cardboard showing through which i painted gold so that it's looking pretty and not that color and then i covered it with fabric well i didn't touch this here because of course i didn't have a whole lot of masking tape stuck on everywhere but in any case i'm going to use washi tape this is uh, this washi tape has a backing on it as you can see and i really don't want the washi tape to be larger than that white so what i'm going to do i just marked where uh, the length of washi tape that i need but i think i need to col color this down a little bit more just like that because it's going to be showing through when I pop that washi tape down so I'm just going to do it here as well I used to do this with paint but it's actually much easy easier to just use a marker and you don't have to wait for the paint to dry all right just double checking so I'm actually going to use a few uh, layers of the washi tape and first of all I want to have glue in the hinge washi tape is not strong it's not designed to stick things in place it's designed to be moved around for example or, or just to you know it's decorative tape that's not very strong so of course i'm always going to apply glue and spread it out mainly so that i know that i have glue everywhere and then i want to apply my washi tape but i don't want to sort of uh, glue down the whole piece and then if it's wrong i can't do anything about it so i'm just going to you know just make sure that it's nice and straight Think that's looking good let's see it's not very straight though is it we'll make it work all right so i'm pushing that washi tape inside of that groove see that that washi tape is there and now i'm going to repeat on this side i'm actually going to overlap them like this so that i'm hiding i don't know i'm just gonna do whatever and again applying glue all, all over and i'm actually going over the top of this washi tape all right let's see if i can do this correctly this time all right that looks pretty good uh, and again get that washi tape into that crease and there we have it perfect our next step is closure so the reason why we're doing closure now is because you might decide to be adding stuff on here stuff that you want covered for example let's say you want to do maybe a brad you will want to hide the feet on the inside so you would apply your brad here and then you would apply the panel to hide all this business going on so that's why we're doing closure now this is where you decide what closure you want for your journal you might not want any closure you might want to have a bit of lace uh, that's perhaps attached maybe just to the back back to the spine or you might want to do some grommets here and wrap some sari silk for your closure whatever i thought for this type of a journal i think it would be better not to have a bow here's an example this kind of thing but i don't necessarily want anything in here in the middle so i'm not gonna go with any of that sort of stuff so anyway that was my thought process here is another idea for a closure so you can have Oh, this is pretty much what I'm doing in this tutorial, this section here. And I was thinking of doing this, but I didn't want anything like this on the front of my handbag. It just really didn't go. But here's also another idea for a closure. Just a little bit of chain on this bulldog clip. And then you're clipping your journal closed like that. But now is the time to think about the closure before we go and finish off the inside. So what I'm going to do today, do I want to do this type of closure? I mean, I do really like it and I think it goes really well with the overall look. It's decided. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut myself a little strip of this vinyl. You can use fabric or even scrapbook paper would work, but I think something a bit more durable than scrapbook paper is probably your best bet. So I'm just going to approximately decide on the width that I want and then it doesn't have to be this long I just need it to kind of wrap around so perhaps something like this that looks about right I just need really straight edges just want to get rid of these little bits that are sticking out the frame just want to check is it too long 
probably a bit too long but that's alright I can always cut it from the other side so now what I'm going to do is maybe I will round the edges here just round the corners like that there we go perfect and now I am using a shank button I need space see that there I need that space in order to be able to wrap around whatever I'm using you can use elastic or I'm using a chain here so it just needs to be able to wrap around that so now I'm going to sew this on to this piece it has to be in the middle it won't look good if it's kind of to the sides all right my needle is ready to go and i'm using thick and sturdy thread i'm not using anything that's thin that can break off easily i really need these buttons sewn on very securely onto there i'm just marking myself the middle and i'm doing this first stitch just to secure that thread on there and now i'm going to go ahead and add my button here we go and as you're sewing the button on it's really important not to scrunch up the fabric that you're using you don't want your stitches to kind of do this to the fabric there we go so that's the first stitch and I'm just gonna go through it a few times just to make sure that it's really secure and really tight on there so that's the second stitch and I'm just going to keep going now. Now that I have a few stitches already, I'm just going to wrap my needle around, I mean wrap the thread around maybe a couple of times and then stitch that down. And I'm quite happy with how secure that is on there. And now I'm just going to tie a knot here at the back to secure everything in place. All right, that's done. And I do have a little bit of uh, scrunching of the fabric happening I try to avoid it as much as I can because it's going to be glued down and I really want that glued down nice and flat onto the book and if the fabric is scrunched up too much then it's not going to glue flat but we'll make it work okay now is the time to glue this down so I'm going to get the strongest glue I have you can use super glue for this I'm going to use my art glitter glue and I'm going to apply glue everywhere onto the knot and all the way up, not all the way up here because we'll do that later, we're just gluing it to the front cover. I have quite a bit of glue on there so there's probably going to be some glue seeping out so I have my rag ready and now let's try and find the middle and just glue that down so you'll see what's happening here because that fabric is crunched up when I press it down up here it lifts down here when I press it down here it lifts up there so I just kind of have to do it bit by bit making sure it's exactly in the middle picking up any of the seeping glue that's looking good it's looking like it's where I want it to be so I'm just going to let this dry for a little bit before I continue with the next step and as you'll notice I didn't glue the inside down yet only because it's quite bulky here so when I put my panel down it's going to be visible under the panel but you you could just go ahead and glue this side down as well if you prefer not to have that visible here and there's also another reason why I'm not gluing that down straight away see how it's lifting I just want to wait until this is dry not completely but another reason why I don't want to glue that down well you could I suppose is because I'm going to put brads here see these brads they are there for you know they look nice and also they're holding everything in place because you can see here I also had a bit of scrunching up of the vinyl so the brads help you know it's an extra security step this this is not going to go anywhere so I'm going to do the same thing on this one and I'm going to add four brads just there I'm going to make four holes just eyeballing it hoping for the best I do want them to be symmetrical as much as possible and I'm gonna apply the brads that's looking pretty good it's not you know perfect this one could have gone more to the right but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it as it is because I think it's it's fine all right close the brads and now I'm going to repeat the same step up here all right just checking that I'm happy with the placement of brads and again close the brads and done 
it's all messy on the inside but that's fine because everything will be covered up that's looking quite good i'm gonna give all of this a clean a little bit later but we're just making sure that there's no fraying edges and there's no seeping glue and that's looking quite nice depending on what type of a closure you want if you want say a hair tie or a piece of elastic that wraps around from here to here you would attach your elastic at this stage perhaps if you want to hide the knot here at the back i'm not actually doing anything at this stage here because all i'm doing for my closure is this ribbon and crimp so i'm going to apply that at a later stage so i've got my closure sorted out and the next step is the front and back panel so this is where we are hiding all of this i am using this scrapbook page for the panels the front and back panels so i'm going to cut it down to exactly the same size as the white edges over here so i'm just going to mark myself I might actually do it on the other side so that I can see better. So I'm marking first the height. All right, that's where I'm going to trim this down. So that's the height sorted. And now I'm going to just trim it off somewhere. You know, I have this beautiful covering here so I can have it this short. I can have it all the way to the edge over here. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to line it up over here on the side there with the white paper and perhaps I'll just trim it down there and I'll do the same for this piece here as well, same for the back. All right, so my two panels are cut down. I'm double checking that everything's good and that's looking pretty good. And then this one's gonna be glued on top. And if you, I mean, it looks nice, I, I like it. But if you don't want it like that, you would glue that down first and then glue this over the top. That would work, you know, but for some reason, I really like this look. I might ink the edges I think it gives it a nice finish see it just makes it look complete all right edges are inked and now it's time to glue it down so when you're gluing this down or when you're applying the glue it's really really important to have that glue all the way to the edge around the edges and everywhere else and then i'm going to use my finger to spread that glue all the way to the edge all right and time to glue it down and really press down i probably could have had it a bit longer there's a bit of white showing here maybe i can use a brown pencil to kind of make that a little bit less visible yes that did the trick that looks a bit better all righty and now repeat the process on the back and done so before we move on to the next step i'm just going to glue this down i'm going to round the edges perfect and now again the same as before i'm gonna apply glue all over this piece and also on the edge of the book cover there perfect and glue it down as simple as that the next step is to prepare your pages uh, or your signatures. I am going to do two signatures for this spine. In this one here, the previous one that I did, my spine is a bit wider, so I did three signatures. I can also fit three signatures in this book, but I'm just going to go with two signatures to make it nice and easy. I have already prepared the pages that I want to use, and for this journal, I just really, really like the idea of using just tea dyed paper. I'm not putting in any book pages, I'm not putting in any scrapbook paper. Over here I did also the same thing, just uh, tea dyed paper, but then I sewn the lace. We'll get to this, but first I want to show you how to get your pages the correct size. So you could have something like this. This is just standard copy size paper, or computer paper. It hasn't been cut down. I'm going to pop them into signatures first. I have 20 folded pages here, so that's 10 per signature. I'm going to pop it into a signature, nestling inside each other like this. Two signatures ready. At this stage, you might decide to have them sticking out. You can see here the lace is sticking out. What I want to do for this journal, I don't want to do the lace. I don't want them sticking up or out. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and it's actually also the first thing that I did 
for these pages, even though I have the lace sticking out, the actual pages themselves, I'll show you, the actual pages fit within the book cover. You can see they're trimmed down. So if there was no lace, there would be nothing sticking out. So first I'll grab my first signature and I'm just going to mark the height where I need to cut it. So I'm going to leave that margin up the top and bottom and I'm going to mark where I need to cut off all of my pages. And now I'm going to mark how much I need to trim off here. So I'm putting the signature in like that and then I'll just do this. And when I do my trimming, I'll do it a tiny little bit less than this line. There we have it. First, I'm going to trim all of these sides off because if I do that, then I won't be able to see this line. So anyway, I'm going to trim all of that off. That's done. And now I'm going to do the height and I'm working on one signature at a time. Okay, let's see. All right, so that's perfect. I love it. I think it's exactly how I wanted it to be. Get my second signature and I might use this signature as a guide. So I'm just going to pop it on top like this and trim away. And now trim off the top. And done. So at this stage, it's up to you what you want to do with the pages and what sort of embellishing and, and adding things you want to do. When I made this journal, after I trimmed down my pages, I took the whole sheet to my sewing machine and I was sewing strips of lace on top and bottom. Some pages I left with nothing. You know, some pages I did just the top and bottom and some pages I did just the side here or like in this first page I did top and bottom and the side here. So you can see this lace over here. It's done on every, I don't know, four pages or so. I wanted to keep this journal kind of looking pretty much like this. So the next step is the binding. I made myself a template which is the exact same height as my signature and now I'm going to find the middle make a little fold there and then perhaps I'm doing a three pamphlet three whole pamphlet stitch so I'm just going to mark the holes so I have those little creases mark myself the middle and then the top and the bottom and I'm also going to put a little T to stand for top next thing I'm going to do is mark where I'm going to poke the holes on the cover on the spine so because I have two signatures I need them bound somewhere there so I'm just going to draw myself a faint line where I want to bind my signatures and then I'll mark the holes so first thing I'm going to do is find the approximate middle of the spine so I'm just looking at the spine here that's the approximate middle and then I want my signatures perhaps half a centimeter away from uh, on both sides of that middle line there we go you can see those two lines that I marked it doesn't have to be exact signs but you want your signature sewn in straight you don't want crooked lines and you know it's nice to have an even spacing between the signatures so now I'm going to grab my template I've got my T for top so that's the front cover so that's the top of the journal and now I'm going to align this with one of the lines that I've drawn the first line and I'm going to mark where I need to punch the holes so that they align with my template because I'm going to use that to punch the holes through my signatures so here we go three holes and then down here all right markings made you probably can't see it but I can see it so I'm going to go ahead and get my awl or pokey tool and poke the holes where I made the markings and then hope for the best that's looking pretty even time to poke some holes through the signature so get your signature ready get your template and pop it in there nice and snug and now I'm going to use those markings of course poke the holes there we go done and now these holes should align perfectly with the holes you can't see but they should align with the holes that you made on your spine and time to bind so I'm using waxed thread you can use embroidery floss or whatever you have and I'm gonna start go through the middle hole in the signature and the middle hole in the spine 
then go back through the top hole on the spine first I do the spine and then through the top hole on the signature now we're gonna go down the bottom hole through the signature and through the spine tighten everything and now go through the spine and the signature will it work oh it went through sometimes it takes a bit of oh and now I lost it try again perfect it worked twice in a row sometimes it takes a bit of maneuvering make it nice and tight trim that off and I'm gonna tie a knot and a double knot or I'm gonna do this S thing this goes under there this goes under there then we have this S thing happening then that goes through there that goes through there and this is my second knot but instead of the knot sitting on top of each other they are now sitting next to each other so there's no added bulk there we go you might want to do a little bow all right so that's the first signature bound and it's nice and straight and beautiful in there and now we repeat the process for the second signature done let's have a look that's looking pretty good symmetrical just working those pages in a little bit and here we go how cool does that look i'm loving the look of that i'm not sure which one i prefer do i like the lace do i like this i don't know now we need to finish off the closure so i'm just using pieces of some broken jewelry you can see i don't know what i'm gonna use from this but the first thing that i need to do is apply one of these ribbon and crimps i think they're called and i want it to be right there in the middle so i found my middle and now i'm gonna crimp it down those little teeth are going to sink into that cover and they're not gonna budge and now i just need something that's going to loop around this button here so i'm going to use maybe a little bit of this it's going to be too long but i can always shorten it so i'm going to apply that jump ring right through all right that's good okay i'm going to use this for my loop and you have to leave because it's not elastic it can't be tight because you won't be able to open it up so we're leaving extra just so you know what i'm doing you can see on this one i have a little one piece of a, of a chain here and then i looped on the second piece here and that's my loop and you can see how it's quite loose so first thing i'm going to do is cut this shorter there we go that's shorter and now i'm going to determine the size of this chain i think that's about right just approximate now i need to join the two chains together so i'm getting a second jump ring pop that on there I pop that on there and now pop the other side of this chain also on there and close the jump ring let's see this is what we have a little loop and it's kind of too big actually no it's not too big because with the use of this journal the journal is going to fatten up and and fill up with all sorts of stuff so i definitely want space here so i'm quite happy with that but when you look at it like this it seems like there's too much chain and the very last special touch is to add book corners so i have a little box of bits and pieces and book corners these are all from ebay i really think they add a nice special touch so the way that i apply them is i just pop a little bit of i'll, I'll do one on camera i just do a little bit of glue just to make sure that when that goes on it's not going to come off then i pop the corner on and then crimp it down and there's one corner done i'm gonna go ahead and finish the others off camera and i'll be right back and there we have it all four corners are attached and that's looking quite nice really love how that looks and i just want to put stuff in here because it's looking a little bit thin and that's looking really really yummy i'm gonna do a quick flip through and show you what i put in so basically i clipped in a whole lot of stuff so there's really not that much creativity involved but i'm going to show you anyway so i have a pocket there i have a laminated little thing here or laminated leaf really most of these things i have tutorials for this is a hidden paper clip you see it's a paper clip it's hidden and then you can pop something underneath perhaps that's just to demonstrate so a hidden paper clip this here is a little notepad of bits and pieces and that can be completely removed see just like that then 
I've clipped some vellum page. This is a sticker. I mean, the idea is for these to be, there's another, this is a belly band and I have a video on making these little book page embellishments. I'll link all the videos I'm mentioning down below in the description box. This is an envelope and I just popped some stuff in there. I also have a video, I think this was in my wonky envelopes tutorial where you make envelopes without measuring. So they all, this one's not wonky, but anyway, that's that video. And just click more stuff in. And then, you know, uh, what, what was I going to say? This is also a video. The idea is for the recipient of this journal to be able to, oh, I missed a whole lot of pages here. Maybe I did that on purpose. I'll put something there. I don't know if this is gonna fit. This is my fabric tags video. Shorten that a little bit. The idea is that the recipient of this journal will be able to move stuff around, you know, a little sticker there, a little flower here, maybe a tuck spot, move stuff around and place these things wherever they want during the journaling process. This is also a video, fabric envelopes. I don't even know what they're called. And I've just popped some stuff in there as well. So all of these little pieces of ephemera are meant to be moved around as you're journaling. So you might come to this page and decide, I don't want this. Or you might want this on this page. You might want to do a collage here on your creative little session, right? So you're just pulling out bits and pieces. Here is a little clear pocket. This was in my bits and pieces folder where I just make little things and then, you know, use them up when I need them. Same as this. This is a cluster and that can, of course, you know, you can glue the three sides down, pop it down on a page and put in. What I do sometimes is I journal on separate pieces of paper rather than uh, journaling directly on the page, which I do do as well. But sometimes I will journal on, I don't know, a random piece like this and then I will have like six pages that I've journaled on and then I pop those pages into pockets. Here's a bookmark and a little magazine image that I vintaged up that was also from a video, how to vintage up magazine images. Here's a little envelope, something in there I think, and then these are stickers, and then at the back I just popped in just some little more bits and pieces to be used. So now that's all nice and chunky and pretty looking and let's see how that closure is gonna work perfect absolutely perfect so imagine like going out on a stroll with your little handbag but it's actually a journal like how cool is that will i ever do that you know you you just never know you might see me taking a walk in the park with my little handbag journal i mean you never know please let me know what you think do you like this project Will you make it? I think it's pretty cool. It's unique, you know, something different. It'll look really cool sitting on a shelf. Here are the notes. If you want to take a screenshot, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Any questions you might have, anything at all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.